In-fed vertical antennas. Counterpoise. No counterpoise. Ground plane. I don't know. There's a lot of questions to be answered. And I want to get past all of the high-end technical mumbo-jumbo uh, science and uh, all the comments and everything that's going to come from all of the uh, drive-by computer keyboard engineers. And let's get down to really building, the art of building a vertical and fed antenna. I built quite a few of them, and uh, I want to go over some of the lessons learned and some of the things that I feel are a must for building an in-fed vertical antenna. Stick around. So just what exactly is a vertical in-fed antenna? A lot of debate. I've actually been told that um, in-fed antennas do not have counterpoise wires, and uh, you can't call it an in-fed if it has a counterpoise. I kind of beg to differ because um, an in-fed antenna is definitely going to have something to counter it, and usually it's the coax. If you don't have a counterpoise on it, you're using the coax as the counterpoise. You know, with my antennas, I like to put a small uh, one small little counterpoise on them. I know the antennas I built, the, the horizontal or slopers, I, I'll even put for a uh, for my 40 meter in-fed antennas, I'll put a 5% of a wavelength piece on it. So, you know, let's just say my for my vertical, my 20 meter vertical, one of my favorite antennas, uh, my 20 meter vertical antenna, I put 5% of a wavelength. So just quick, theoretically, a half wavelength uh, for 20 meters is 10, so my driven element in the air is a 10 meter wire, 49 to 1 at the feed point, and I got a 1 meter wire. 1 meter is is 5% of 20 meters, and uh, that, that seems to work well. One thing you really have to do when you, when you put this type and use this theory of the 5% of a wavelength theory on a half wave antenna is that you got to choke it, and you need to choke it at the feed point. So what I usually do is I'll I'll have the uh, let's say the forty nine to one the uh, the driven element in the air off the forty nine to one I'll have the counterpoise and then a choke right at the uh, at the uh, transformer of the forty nine to one to choke it to to force it to use that small counterpoise and this thing works great I've had some great contacts I mean I had a QRP contact on the beach in North Carolina to Australia just recently using this antenna it's it's a fun antenna I, I, I have a good time with it so two ways to uh, to do to basically counter a, a wire in the air is the short counterpoise are using the coax now the best way I don't care what anyone says whether it's it's not an infant or whatever the best thing to do for any antenna is to put as many counterpoise wires as you possibly can underneath it and put a good ground plane underneath it. But is that an infant antenna? Now we're saying maybe it's a ground plane antenna. I don't care what you call it. I just know that what has worked for me, I kind of want to pass that on to you and, and, and how it does. You know, recently I built a half wave vertical for 10 meters. And for that, I just used the coax as the counterpoise and ran the coax along as you really need to use long coax if you're going to use it as a counterpoise but i used a coax a 50 foot long piece of coax all the way down and inside i was in my jeep and then put the uh the choke at the other end and you want to do that whenever you're using the coax as a counterpoise because you want to keep that common mode current noise and everything else that you're using basically you don't want your counterpoise wire right into your radio so uh you gotta choke it there just kind of clip it off and do it there but that's kind of two verticals in fed verticals that i've built is the uh I've, the one with a 10 meter dx commander pole i really use that same pole for both of them but one is a uh, in fed half wave vertical for 20 meters and an in fed half wave for 10 meters with that 20 meter antenna i had 20 17 15 12 and 10 did have to use a, a, an automatic tuner, uh, ATU that's in the radio, or you could use an antenna tuner to get 17 and 12 on that uh, that antenna. But uh, without, I could, I've got it resonant and could have done without it, you know, without the tuner for 20, 15, and 10, and it worked well. Another thing that works really good as a vertical antenna. Is random wire antennas and random wire antennas come in different lengths. They're really not random. I, I encourage you to go do some research if you haven't worked with random wire antennas. Do some research, but um, there's for verticals. I'd start out with a, a 17 and a half foot 
vertical antenna, which is a random wire antenna. With that, I use a four to one un un, and I've done it different ways with a ground plane underneath it. I've done it with a short, matter of fact, I have an antenna, that's basically the antenna that I call the Coastal 20, where I have a, a short coax underneath it and a four to one with, and that is um, a, a 17 and a half foot driven element antenna as a vertical. Works really good, and uh, I've had some great success with it. An amazing vertical antenna that's a somewhat basically a random antenna is the Ribikoff antenna. And that's a 25 foot antenna that um, it, that thing I've worked from 40 to six meters with it. And uh, with once again, with a four to one un, -un in that antenna, man, just an amazing antenna, the Ribikoff. And uh, I, I do some research on that. I've got a video on that one as well. Some other really great lengths that uh, that I think you could get up vertical. Uh, one's a, a 29 foot vertical. I built one of them recently. I have a, a video on that. At that point, once you got up to 29 uh, feet, that's when I start using a nine to one on un for that antenna, and uh, that's great. That antenna actually is where you start really getting a better, uh, a little bit better in the 40 meter band. Uh, the, the the smaller antennas are, are really for 20 through 10 meters, but uh, to getting up around 29 vertical with a, a nine to one un un. Uh, the, the 29 foot works pretty decent on 40. One that works amazing on 40 is a 35 and a half foot uh, vertical. Once again, a nine to one un un with that one as well. And um, if you've got a pole big enough for that, I like a 12 meter pole. That will fit great on a 12 meter pole with room to spare. One more antenna I have built as a sloper is a, a, a random wire is a 41 foot random wire. And once again, that's a nine to one un un with that. That was a great antenna as a sloper. I really want to get a 41 foot antenna in the air. It's just slightly over 12 meters. I don't have a 12 meter pole. My biggest pole is my DX Commander 10 meter pole, but I'm looking in the future to build that 41 because I think that would really be a better antenna for the 40 meter band. And, um, you know, it's a, a, as a vertical in my environment, you know, down by the beach near salt water, that should work pretty well. So, um, those are just, uh, some of the verticals I've built. And, uh, like I said, I just want to give you some advice on that counterpoise wires. I know there's some research out there and I've actually found it true with uh, random wire antennas. It was an article in a uh, QST magazine way back in like, 1936. They were talking about unconventional antennas and those random wires where they said, if you're trying 40 to 80 meters on a random wire, you should use a 17 foot counterpoise, but 20 and, uh, and higher a 6.5 foot counterpoise wire for random wires. So a single counterpoise at those lengths and I've used them and they work, they work well. You know, nothing's going to work better than, you know, a, a solid ground plane underneath you. But a lot of times you find yourself in, in, in a spot or a small garden or whatever where you can't have that. Listen, my advice to you is just get the wire up in the air and do with it what you can. If you can't get a counterpoise under it at all, if you got it up on a roof, use the coax, a long piece of coax, 50 foot of coax, and, and use that as the counterpoise. Try my method of a 5% of a wavelength uh, as a counterpoise. I think that might work well for you as well. And if you got it in a big backyard or an area where you could have a, a ground plane, put it down. You know, I'm very blessed that I live by the sea. I get a lot, uh, I get a lot of gain and, and, and really uh, have a great uh, ground underneath me, RF ground by the ocean. And it might do a little better than you if you're if you're not by the sea. But if some people like that in an elevated area, like in the mountains or whatever, you might do better than me up there with um you know with using a, a small counterpoise or you know m maybe the coax is a counterpoise. Bottom line is just get a wire in the air and experiment. There's so many people I know. There's going to be some guys who are going to watch this video and just lose their mind because they're striving for perfection. And these guys are going to be the you know the 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 keyboard experts that uh that will put the comments and and they've got to tell you everything that you've done wrong with a, with an antenna. There is no wrong antenna. Every antenna is a compromise. You've heard that before. Get a piece of wire in the air and experiment. You know, I see all these people asking questions and, and then you get so many replies on social media is about an antenna. The way I did it, I just went out there, cut wire and tried it. You know, I'd see something, I'd experiment, try it. I want to encourage you to do the same thing. Get out there and experiment with in-fed vertical wires in the air. Do what you want with the counterpoise. Use, use the coax, a small counterpoise. 
build a ground plane underneath it. But get out there and experiment. Vertical antennas are amazing. Omnidirectional, low takeoff angle, so you can get some really good DX out of verticals. And I hope these few that I just talked about will uh, give you some ideas. You know, not just homemade antennas. There's a, there's commercial antennas. I personally, I live in an area where I got a very small place. I cannot get a ground plane underneath it. Up, up, up using my antenna. Up on a fire escape, up my back window, I have a uh, Sigma Uricom HF360 vertical antenna with no no ground plane, no, no no radials, as they say. Yeah, you know what it is? Right there, my coax. I have a long 50 foot coax, and it's 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 the counterpoise for this antenna, and I do well with it. I, it's like I said, it's all I could have, and that's what I'm trying to tell you. Experiment with what you can have. Even if you've got an area, you know, experiment with different things. I think that's really how you learn about antennas. And that's the art, the art of building an antenna and not listening to the experts, reading books and, and never building anything. And there's so many theoretical experts out there. And, you know, when you really get down to it, they've, they've built two or three antennas. I've built 100 antennas or more. I mean, that's what I like to do. I'm a nerd. I enjoy doing it. Probably build two antennas a week just goofing around, whatever, in real time, not just modeling and, and to see how they'll work. Um, if you're into modeling antennas, that's really cool too. Do it. I mean, I'm an engineer and I model all day, so I want to get out in the real world and build and have some fun. Anyway, I hope that um, kind of gives you some encouragement to get out there. Don't listen to the experts. Don't listen to the scientists and the theoretical people that are going to tell you that won't work, this won't work, or whatever. Get a wire in the air and see if it works. Get out there and have fun. Yeah, you may have an antenna that's compromised. You're going to have some loss. But you know what? You're not losing everything. A wire in the air is better than nothing. Get out there and play radio and cut some wire and make some antennas. Until next time, I'm Walt, K4OGO. 73, my friends.